Hello guys welcome back to our YouTube channel, in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto becomes the freezing shinobi and got harem. Part 2. If you want more awesome fan fiction like this don't forget to hit that subscribe button, so without wasting any time let's get into the video. Naruto was standing in an empty grass field the day has finally arrived. Naruto recently graduated from high school and now is waiting for the helicopter to pick him to West Genetics. Ever since the incident with Emma, Naruto continued to increase abilities, if only by a little bit. Even though it was hard, it was worth it, since Naruto's overall speed, stamina and strength have increased the most. So I really wish that I had taken my manga with me. Naruto complains as he already waited for more than an hour since he arrived here. He wore his new genetics uniform which was a bit too stiff and tight for his tastes. Oh, how he would like to wear his old robes again and his orange jumpsuit as well. He was about to complain more until he sees a carrier helicopter flying towards his direction. Naruto smiles thinking of how interesting the upcoming years will be before remembering that he needs to keep his powers hidden. He frowns and touches his right eye. He doesn't know how or why, but his eye constantly changes into the same one as the Nova Woman's, the one who had bestowed him powers. He can usually suppress the change, but now he cannot hence he grows his hair to cover it. Thankfully he was able to get Nero to make him a special contact lens that allows everyone to see his old eye. Unfortunately, accidents do happen and in a case he loses the lens, his hair will cover his eyes until he puts on another one. He also must always keep his strength at a minimum level, so he wouldn't attract attention and wouldn't stand out much from other limiters. Speaking of limiters, he couldn't help but sweat drop as he remembers his last chat with Arnett, during which she explained that the males at the academy act like dumb puppies for their Pandora. Jiraiya, while being a big pervert, would still be disappointed at them. No backbone whatsoever. His big sister has also warned him to be careful when choosing a Pandora to partner up with. Not all of them choose limiters for the right reasons apparently. Well those who will try do something unsavory with him will receive lots of pranking as a retribution. What? You think interdimensional travel will make him lose his love for pranks? Hell no. Well he doesn't do them that very often, but from time to time he does indulge into this guilty sin against bad people of course. The blonde boy was brought out of his musings when he notices a girl with closed eyes smiling at him. The weird thing about that smile was that it was both fake and real at the same time. Odd, but to Naruto it wasn't the weirdest thing that he had actually seen, and he had seen a lot. Hello, are you Mr. McMillan? Naruto nods and gave a thumbs while grinning at her, yup, Naruto McMillan reporting for duty. And you are. The girl did a small curtsy and smiled a bit more naturally, my name is Chiffon Fairchild, but please, just call me Chiffon. Naruto nods again at her greeting and grabs his bags, sorry that we were late. We had to pick up another student, Aoi Kazaya. Naruto expertly hid his surprise when he saw a boy of the same age as him sitting in the helicopter. He is the little brother of the Pandora who was the hero of the Ninth Nova Clash. Naruto smiles at him and the boy does the same. The kid probably had enough people telling him that they were sorry or proud of his sister, so Naruto decided not bring up that topic. Chiffon sat next to him as the two buckled up and the flying machine took off the ground, so, I take it that you are Arnett McMillan's little brother? Naruto nods, that's right you're a friend of hers. Oh uh, no no, I don't have the privilege of talking to her every day. We're more of acquaintances actually. She answered honestly. The entire time the girl talked, Naruto had one thing in his mind her eyes. They are as interesting as Kakashi's mask. One of his few regrets from his old world was never managing to see what was behind it. Naruto watches as Aoi and the girl chat about the things at school, this was his chance. Naruto's hand slowly and discreetly reach for Chiffon's face to force her eyes open, however, she grabs his hands in steel-like grip and suddenly her smile resembled the one Sakura would have whenever he did something stupid oh crap. TT there was a bug on your head. Chiffon's smile became non-threatening again, oh, thank you for getting rid of it. She cheerfully replies and turns back to Aoi to continue their chat. Safe. Naruto smirks as he slowly tries again to see what her eyes look like you must Wham. Naruto found her small fist digging deeply into his stomach, but as quickly as it came so as quickly it left as Chiffon quickly went back to her old sitting position. The other young individual in the helicopter looks confusingly at Naruto's slouching figure. I'm fine. The boy nodded and tuned away. Naruto looks at Chiffon with a really. Look, seriously. I think that was a bit overboard, don't you think? Chiffon tilts her head in a confused matter, hmm. I don't understand what you're talking about. Perhaps the helicopter's shaking has caused you some motion sickness. She answered in a clearly fake innocent voice. Naruto clenches his fists tightly and looks at her with determined eyes that convey the hidden message in them, I'm going to see what your eyes look like. Believe it. The triumphant smirk on Chiffon's face conveyed its own hidden message, you will try, but you will fail. Oh it's on now. 
Naruto decides to put off this hidden challenge for later as his mind trails back to Nero and Emma. The brother of the duo had recently got a job at robotics and is bragging about how he is going to make a giant robot. While the research and development in that industry isn't really that popular these days, Naruto is glad his friend can work at a place he likes. Emma herself is now attending a school for gifted students and takes high-level classes. She still has some trouble fitting in with her having social interactions problem, but she is slowly breaking out of her shell and even managed to make a couple of friends. After revealing his abilities to Nero, which shocked him quite a bit, Naruto was allowed to train in the house basement. During training, Nero would place all sorts of health and body growth monitoring devices he could get his hands on, and the results they showed were quite shocking. From what he can gather, Naruto's body has been growing at an alarming rate because of it being compassed entirely of stigmata tissue. That would explain his sudden growth spurt when he visited Arnett at her training camp. His muscles are strong as bodybuilders, but without being huge masses of meat, though they are still quite big, definitely above swimmer muscle mass as Emma once mentioned. His eyes are much more perceptive, so much in fact that he can actually see a small outline of living things from a wall and look much further into the distance. Overall, he is still looking into what else he has in his body to control over, but thankfully he keeps the basics mastered. From further results Nero also found out that the stigma tissue in Naruto's body is different. While information about Pandora inner workings and research is very limited due to them being very guarded secrets, with some intensive hacking, Nero was able to gather some scraps of information. The frightening thing is that Naruto's stigma tissue is not listed in any known categories that Nero currently had. Naruto fears that the stigma tissue in his body might turn him into a full nova if he already isn't one, but Nero made him relax a bit as after monitoring the tissue for some time, he found out that instead of taking over Naruto's mind, the tissue is working in a symbiotic relationship with his body at least for now. It is unclear what more changes will Naruto's body experience from the tissue and he can only hope it will be mostly positive. To complement his physically enhanced body, Naruto has put some extra effort in mastering his Volt weapons, or at least learned to use them good enough so he wouldn't make a fool out of himself. His current known weapons are. Yamato, Katana, The Fangs, Kunai's, Vanguard, Longsword and Tower Shield, Judgment, Bow Staff, Twin Dragons, Bladed Tonfas. For hand-to-hand -hand training he's a journeyman level with Taikai and Kenpo. These styles work well with his Kyushin, Gauntlets. Naruto is brought out of his thoughts when he feels the helicopter landing, and Shifan asks him and Kazuya to follow her. Finally, now that he's here Naruto can ask Nero to hack into the West Genetics mainframe. But he still has to wait for his friend's special project to finish before they can get the information on high-end skills. Naruto looks to his right and notices that the once group of three is now four people, as they were joined by some girl called Ticey Fennel. They continue to walk through the academy grounds until they reach some sort of stadium, and if Naruto's memory is correct from the conversations he had with Arnett, this is the place carnivals are being held. The blonde boy looked up when he felt the ceiling above them cracking. He grabs Aoi as the other two girls are already on the move. The four hit the deck as the debris fell, and two female figures landed not too far from them. Ugake didn't see that coming. Naruto's head popped out from a pile of rubble, and Shifan moved in to help him. Nice timing in saving Kazai kun she complimented. After Naruto was freed, they proceeded to dug out the young Aoi while the two mystery Pandoras fought. This is what a carnival is like. Arnett you are getting Suo pranked. You can count on that. A brother must always look out for one sister that includes punishing her a little for lying as well. He sees the two Pandora responsible for this damage continue fighting and from the looks of things, they won't be stopping anytime soon. Naruto frowns in concentration and uses his enhanced sight to make out better details of their appearances first looks at the Pandora that closest to him. She appeared to be in her late adolescent years with a fair skin complexion and a buxom figure. She has long blonde hair that runs all the way down to her back with several bangs hanging over her forehead and sports medium blue eyes. She also wears a blue headband over her hair to keep it in place. She held a unique sword that reassembled a lot who has volt weapon. Her opponent is another Pandora that has long, burgundy red colored hair, which dons two large pigtails curled at the tips and tied off at the top with blue ribbons. The redhead's eyes have a dark purplish tint, and she wears the standard Pandora outfit. This was a surprise to Naruto, since the blonde girl's outfit was quite different. Her genetics uniform is more unique compared to the standard issue Pandora uniform, consisting of a long red dress that reaches to her ankles with gold accents. The dress is open at the top, giving view to her shoulders and cleavage. The sleeves have crowned shoulder guards that bear the genetics emblem. Nissan Naruto whips his head to his left to see Kazaya about to rush in and tackle the blonde Pandora. He intercepted the boy by grabbing his arm. Let me go. Nissan is alive. No. She is not. Calm down and take a closer look at her. 
I don't remember your sister having blonde hair, do you Kazaya-san? Naruto spoke in Japanese, hoping that the boy will calm down and see reason. Those words made Kazaya look at him, while the blonde hair Pandora defeated the retreated one. Naruto was then surprised when he could no longer move his body almost like he was being restrained by a powerful force, freezing. He whispers as Kazaya made an omnidirectional freezing field that was almost the exact same one as Naruto's, the only difference being that the former shinobi's freezing was more darker blue in color. From the corner of his eyes he saw Shifan and her friend being stuck in place as well. The strength of the field was quite powerful, maybe about two steps shy from his own, but still quite powerful. Does this team know about his ability or could it be a coincidence? Naruto struggles to break free until Kazaya finally ran out of steam and fell into unconsciousness. Unfortunately, Naruto fell on his face from the motion he was trying to do, but the freezing field didn't allow it to continue it until it was dismissed. Oh he deadpans while standing up and dusting himself off. Shifan walks up to him and asks in a worried voice, are you alright? Naruto nods as he cracks some of his bone joints, yeah, just a few bruises and nothing else. The young blonde Macmillan asked, trying to look as surprised by this event as Shifan was. She smiles as her friend helped Kazaya up, since the tour is kind of ruined, how about I take you to your room? My friend and vice president, Taisi, will take Aoi to his. Naruto shrugs and nods, but not before giving one final glance at the blonde Pandora. She was also caught in the freezing field and after it disappeared, she looked at their direction. He looks back at Shifan who already started walking away, Oi, wait for me. Naruto rushes to catch up with her. While the two walk, they passed many other limiters and Pandora who were smiling and waving at them. Naruto awkwardly smiles and waves back, he still can't get used to complete strangers being kind enough to greet him. Old habits die hardy guest, like for example when he fights, he sometimes can't help but make a cross-hand sign, or how he often looks behind his back for possible hidden assassin attacks, because of his carrier as a ninja. Another habit is that he often meditates when he feels stressed out and unconsciously does so for hours. Shifan stops at the dorm entrance and gives Naruto his keycard, now, your room is 324. I'll pick you up tomorrow morning to get you to your first class. Do you have any questions you would like to ask? Naruto shook his head before pausing, wait, can students go out at night? Well, yes they can. I'm the student council president and often do shifts at nights so as long as no one misbehaves, they are free to walk about at night. Why? Fairchild asks as she raises a delicate eyebrow. Naruto gives her a sad smile, I kind of have sleep issues, so I need release some extra energy before going to sleep. But you don't have worry about my grades going down because of it. Chiffon smiles and was about to say something until. Naruto Uo. The two look to their left to see Arnett waving her hand wildly while running at them at an incredible pace. Naruto rolled his eyes while smiling and opened his arms to hug her. His sister suddenly jumps in the air as her smile disappears and is instead replaced by a face full of rage. Naruto's own face turns pale from fear, and instead of greeting her, he starts running away, oh shy. Arnett immediately chases after him, but not before turning to Shifan and giving her a light smile, hey monster can't help going to kill Malit Lebrotherby. She quickly said and dashed after Naruto. Get back here and tell me what the hell are you doing coming to genetics without telling your big sister. Shifan stood there with her smile turning into a more awkward one, wow. But the siblings. Naruto was running at an incredible pace, for a human of course, as his mind went into to Sakura Wrath survival mode, Aka run like hell, and then run some more. He looks back and sees his sister missing, what you ate it in front, not from the back, not from the side Sanofa he was tackled hard by his sister who came from above. She then quickly stands up and puts him into a chokehold, you never told me that you were going to become a limiter at this place. I had to find out about it from dad a few days before you came. She yells as many people look at her with confused expressions, only to quickly run away as Arnett yells at them, what? Naruto moves his left hand and places it on Arnett's stomach. Without a warning, he starts tickling her. The kind mad dog laughs loudly as she falls down on her back with Naruto continuing to tickle her, nah ha ha Naruto please ha 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 st ha ha stop it. Arnett got her wish when she sees her brother offering a hand. You're incorrigible. I don't even know the meaning of that word. He really doesn't, but he helps his sister up anyway, and takes notice of her body. Not like that you pervs. She really has grown out like well not like him, but she still has grown up well. Her breasts were up to cup and perky, Naruto made a mental to beat up a certain white-haired pervert in the afterlife, for teaching him about instantly identifying women's figure measurements, her face was more mature and beautiful with hints of cuteness. Her body was a perfect definition of a kanoichi, lean and strong. Her beauty would have made Ino and Sakura green with envy. Arnett and Naruto stood there silently before slowly embracing each other, I've missed you so much Arnett whispers, and slightly tightens her hold. Naruto's hug also tightens a bit, he missed her very much as well. 
Those video chats or texting are nothing compared to seeing her in the flesh. The two siblings just held each before someone interrupted them. You are really making this just my brother thing hard to believe. Creo came out of nowhere and spoke in a deadpan tone. Creo. Arnett yells as a ferocious blush appeared on her face from embarrassment, that's it, you're going to hear some really loud snoring tonight. Naruto chuckles lightly at the duo comedy routine. He takes a better look at Creo and notices that she was a few inches taller than him with short white hair and figure similar to his sister. Hi there, it's nice to meet one of my sister's friends. My name is Naruto McMillan. The dark-skinned girl smiles respectfully and nods, likewise, but it's surprising that you can have such good manners, since Arnett barely has any. She said the last part teasingly at his sister. Naruto nods as he puts his hand on his chin while giving off an arrogant aura, sigh indeed. Father and I tried to make her learn, but she rebelled. You have my condolences. Creo places a hand on Naruto's shoulder. Arnett started pouting madly, okay, enough with the Arnett bashing. Seriously. Naruto waves his hand trying to dismiss what he said, he, sorry about that, sis. Listen, mind if we pick this up tomorrow morning because I'm feeling kind of tired from today's events and, that punch still hurts, he whispers the last part to himself while chuckling. Chiffon sure has one mean fist. What? But you just got here. Arnett whines childishly before sighing, fine, but I'll be picking you up after tomorrow's classes to meet up with my friends. Naruto nods and walks to his dorm room, sheesh, what a weird day still, that Kazaya kid can deploy freezing field without the need for an arranger set just like me. Naruto doubts that him and Kazaya share similar condition, since his body was hardly even human anymore, given his body being made out of stigma tissue. Now that he thinks about it, he is now always more calm than he usually is. Back home in the elemental nations he was a very impulsive kid. Could this also be the doing of the Nova woman or is it that he was finally growing up nah? Must be that whacked up tissue that he got from that creepy woman. Finally having enough of contemplating, the blonde hair boy just falls to his bed, hoping to get some sleep. At least he's at West Genetics now and can finally continue to protect Arnett, yer yer any sand give me a break he mumbled before falling asleep. The next day. Naruto was snoring loudly in his class and everyone sweat dropped from how lazy he was. Others had eyes twitching knowing that he was the younger brother of the kind mad dog. His teacher, Yumi, had enough of it and walked up to his desk. She rolled up her papers and whacked him on the head. Which actually hurt a lot considering that she is still an active Pandora. Naruto stood up in a salute with a bump on his head, Naruto McMillan reporting for duty oh was I sleeping. Yumi nods as she was about scold Naruto, but is prevented from doing so when the bell rings and he immediately runs out of the class. The boy looks at his watch, the one recently bought for him by his father, and sees that it's time for a lunch break. He walks towards the cafeteria to settle his stomach needs and hopes that they serve a lot of decent food there. Living in a middle-class family can make one hold a lot of space, especially if you have enough metabolism to match a whirlpool. Naruto enters the cafeteria and was astonished at the size of the room and more importantly. The food they serve is like four or even five star cuisines. Naruto stood there dumbstruck, not noticing a certain boy bumping into him. Naruto felt someone falling and looks behind him to see, Kazaya-san. The said boy looks up and sees the same blonde person he arrived at academy with, Naruto-san. I heard that we had lunch break, but I lost my way while trying to find this place. Naruto chuckles as he helps the boy up, sorry for not noticing you. Anyway, do we have to pay for this stuff? Cause if so I'm eating grass from now on. Excuse me. The two turn their heads to see a girl that is from their class. I'm Keiho Hairagi, the class representative, and I want welcome you both to the academy. As Aya bows his head while Naruto nods at the girl's statement, hey, quick question, is the food here free? Keiho nods and before she can say anything concerning it, Naruto got a big plate full of sushi, steaks, vegetables and rice. And some pasta. Cause Aya looks back between the plate and Keiho, what's with the high class cuisine? Keiho giggles at his question, obviously used to the reactions to the unique assortment food, well, we are Earth's best chance for survival, so we get a little more special treatment. Naruto listened intently to her words, while pretending to be too engrossed with his meal to care, from the rumors that Nero read about on the net, West Genetics is the one who gets the most of attention out of all genetics, because off what was it again a smiling monster. With Chiffon. The closed-eyed girl sneezes, very cutely, hm? Odd, I wonder who could be talking about me. She spoke before taking a sudden nap after finishing her paperwork. Zeven her snores were adorable. Back to Naruto. Naruto finished eating his big meal, though he still feels quite hungry, and just watched Kazaya eat a single steak, while Keiho was having burger from Burger Queen. Dude, why would students eat something that they have to pay for instead of the fancy stuff? I guess this is something I will never understand in the modern day of age. 
Besides, it was a bit hard to get used to the fact that in this world, practically every month some kind of new advanced electronic device gets invented. The most advanced things back home was one of those movie projectors and the handheld consoles from that time he was on mission at the Land of Snow. My wonder how Koyuki and the others are doing. It's been a long time since I've thought about any of them. I think I'm getting homesick. Naruto lays his head on the table, he has accepted the fact that he can't go back but he can't help but miss his close friends. Ah perhaps it's just the lack of action that was making him overthink things. Look out, it's the untouchable queen. Naruto looks to see the group of people that crowded over at Burger Queen disperse as the long-haired blonde Pandora from yesterday walk towards it. She places her order and the employee passes her by sliding two bags. She turns around elegantly to leave the room, but as she walks, she unknowingly drops one of the bags. Naruto runs up to the bag, picks it up and places in the girl's hand while smiling brightly, hey, you dropped one of your happy meals. Oh my god, he's going to die. A random limiter from the crowd of students shouted. Why is it always the cute ones? This time a Pandora's voice could be heard. Wasn't he dead? Now at that question all of the students looked more intently at the scene before them. The girl in front of Naruto was first confused by the close contact before starting to blush madly and quite rudely removed her hand away from his, thank you. Naruto smiles even brighter at her and nods, anytime. Well, see ya. With that said, the girl quickly left. Shortly after that Naruto also left to soak in some solar rays on the rooftop. Everybody in the cafeteria had only one question going through their minds, except for Kazaya, what the hell? Why didn't he get a beating? On the rooftop. Naruto was laying on the stone ground, basking in the solar energy of the sun goddess's domain. He also listened to some old classical music as apparently, his and Arnett's mother was a pretty good violinist before she died. It comforts him whenever he gets homesick he took off one of his earbuds when he felt the roof door being opened. He looks back and sees. What was it that they called her ah, yes, the untouchable queen herself, sheesh, if we keep running into each other like this, I will start believing that God wants us to be friends or something. The girl eyes widen from surprised and she quickly looks at Naruto. She watches the boy stare at her for a bit before closing his eyes and going back to daydreaming. After few minutes pass, Naruto slightly opens his eyes to see the blonde buxom girl sitting against the roof wall and silently eating her burgers. He sadly remembered his previous world childhood life the loneliness, the pain. After thinking for a few moments, Naruto nods to himself resolutely. He stands up and sits next to her making slightly jump at his closeness. Hey, it's okay, I'm not gonna do anything to you. He spoke in his casual way of speaking. My name is Naruto McMillan, my likes are swords, Japanese mythology, Raymond, cooking, my dad, my sister, and cleaning. My dislikes are bitter foods, warmongers, cruel people, biased people, and discrimination to anybody. My hobbies are working out, mediation, and writing. My future dreams are to protect my sister and dad and one day perhaps have a family. The girl could only blink comically at the fast introduction, sad Lizer L. Bridget she introduced herself but didn't say anything else. It was clear that she wasn't used to socializing with people, but for what reason, the blonde-haired boy has yet to determine. Naruto smiles at his success in getting the girl to speak if only a little bit. Half an hour later. The two blondes converse with each other well it was more Naruto speaking about mundane and humorous things, while Satellizer just sat silently, holding her legs close to her chest and staring at the ground. While it appeared that she was ignoring him, Naruto knew she was listening to him. The biggest giveaway on her part was her silent giggling whenever Naruto said anything funny, and that's why you should never watch 13 Ghosts God who make such scary movies like those. Satellizer looks away to the side, but Naruto could see how she tried to suppress her giggling. Naruto smiles, he was glad that he managed to get some positive reactions from the girls, it shows that she hasn't succumbed to complete depression yet, and with some effort and time, might open to him a bit more, I'll be listening to music now, so wake me up if you're leaving, or if third period starts. He lays on his back with arms and legs spread apart. He unknowingly touches his female friend's hand, and the latter realizes that his touch. It doesn't trigger the usual reactions I wonder why. Naruto started listening to his favorite song compassed expertly by his mother when he suddenly felt the warmth of the sun fading and instead an unwanted shade appearing, hey sad Lizarus it cloudy or something. When he didn't get answer, he opened his eyes and saw a blue-haired Asian girl looking at him with lust, greed and hidden malice in her eyes. Who the hell are you? Naruto asks angrily. This girl seriously gives off bad vibes. The said girl licks her lips as if trying to make him interested in her and thankfully, it had no effect, your goddess to the perfect school life. Meanwhile with Nero. The brown-haired boy was typing at incredibly fast rate as he was scanning his newest code sequence and checking for any possible errors. Hmm. 
the government has recently updated its security protocols, and more firewalls have been added to protect their main data banks. Wonder what caused them to take such a step. He then turns around and looks at his work table. On it were scattered various electronic and mechanical parts while at center lay what looked like a small robotic creature. Just a few more tweaks, some tests, and you'll be ready to go my little friend. Wonder what will Naruto's reaction be when I finally send you over to him. Nero mused to himself and then turned around to continue work on his computer program again. It's going to be quite tricky in getting the information Naruto needs. In the West Genetics Academy's home economics classroom, Arnett could be seen wearing a white apron over her school uniform and was covered in cake batter. Please, turn out right. The usually ungirly female prays. Her friends were also wearing aprons and were covered in equal amounts of white cake batter. If a certain white-haired super pervert witnessed this scene, he would have had enough research material for ten lifetimes. Elizabeth Mably smiles as she hears her friend pray. She has long curly blonde hair that extends all the way down her back and dark blue eyes, and an hourglass figure with remarkably large breast. She's wearing the standard West Genetics Pandora uniform. Well, from what I heard of your brother from you and Creo, he'll eat the cake with a happy heart or is it stomach in this case? Creo nods while wiping off the batter of her face, yeah, from what I saw he is a really nice guy. Arnett smiles at the compliment her roommate gave to her brother. Hey, now don't get any ideas Creo. I won't allow you to date my brother. Creo was about to shrug off the comment until a devious idea came into her mind and she smirks instead, aw, oh, are you sure about that, sister-in-law. Arnett pales from the idea of Naruto being married to Creo, you. 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 E w w w w w. Not cool. Ugh I'm getting sick from just thinking about it. Elizabeth covers her mouth in effort to contain her giggles as her friends continue with their usual routine. She is truly glad to have met people like them. In fact, they are the closest friends she has ever made in her life and the greatest allies one could ask for. Her mind then wonders about Arnett's brother, Naruto. The leader of third years knew that his name meant Maelstrom, thankfully her grandfather taught her of Japanese culture when she was just a kid and from what Arnett said he was a kind and a mature person. Creo confirmed that he was kind and quite funny as well, which made her even more interested in finally meeting him. Her musings were cut short as Dolly, a friend of Arnett's and occasionally an ally to them, ran in into the classroom breathing heavily and slightly distressed. Arnett. Problem. Naruto. Academy slut. Target. Everyone looks at each with eyebrows raised before looking at Atcha who is the residential master of verbal warfare. The silver-haired lowly girl just sighs, she being used for her special abilities again, she says, Arnett, there's a problem with Naruto. The academy slut is targeting him wait. Everyone saw the usually kind, redeated girl begin release a black aura of doom around her, I'm going to kill that bitch. Elizabeth lifts her hands up in attempt to calm her friend down, before she can go on a killing spree, calm down Arnett. Remember that Miyabi isn't worth it. Naruto should be fine if he mentions that you're his sister. You think I give a rat's ass about that Arnett yells while releasing even more dark aura. Atcha smiles at her friend's less than pleasant reaction and decides to spice things up a bit more, maybe she'll offer your brother her own body as a compensation for being her limiter. Arnett's aura suddenly vanishes and an emotionless expression appears on her face, Elizabeth we're killing her now. The kind mad dog of West Genetics grabs her friend and dashes to where her brother was at. No way she was going to let that skank touch him. Ali looks at Creo and Atcha with a confused face, may I ask, what's up with the white stuff on you too? We were making a cake for Arnett's brother. Ugh, I really feel like taking a shower right about now, Atcha complains as she tries to clean her uniform a bit. Oh well, I guess it can wait. I want to see if this boy is really as amazing as the tomato head said. Creo gave her a deadpan look, you know, Arnett would have killed you if she heard you say that taboo word, and trust me, I just met Naruto, and he seems like an okay guy. HMPH, I'll be the judge of that. The flat-chested girl said declared before Creo smirked. Just make sure you don't fall for him. I've heard you call him cute when you had seen the picture in Arnett's locket. Creo stated. It was just a compliment. It doesn't mean anything. But Naruto and Satellizer. An annoyed Naruto was standing in front of an attractive young woman. She has blue, short hair, a fair face complexion with a body that was fit and light like many other Pandora have, with the only noticeable difference being her breasts that were quite big. All in all she was a knockout of a woman however she was radiating pure unrestrained lust and just about every other negative emotion, just by simply standing here. Naruto frowns as he was also being welcomed by the open glares of the trio of males behind her, what the hell are they so angry at him for? Once again, I shall repeat my question. Who are you? The girl walks towards him, swaying her hips as much as she can to get him to look at her, however, Naruto wasn't interested. 
If he can turn down a kiss from that weird chick Fuka back when he was at Elemental Nations, then resisting amateur rank seduction from this girl wasn't even that hard. I'm terribly sorry for not introducing myself, I'm called Miyabi Kanazuki, but some others call me the Liberator of Virtue. Liberator of Virtue? Give me a break. Naruto mentally thought. His ears twitched when he heard Keiho's faint voice from behind the roof entrance door. It seems she came to watch him for some reason. Wait, isn't she the same Miyabi that Arthur's partner Pandora, Ganesa, told me that she hated? And what's with you Keiho, I never heard you talk like that about anyone. Naruto strains his ears a little bit more, trying to hear the rest of what Keiho is saying. I see, so this Miyabi has no interest in fighting for humanity. Whom around the academy she is known as the rookie limiter glutton. Odd, someone else must be with Keiho San Naruto thought as he heard another voice, a male's voice, begin speaking with the class representative. He turns back to see Miyabi who was now only a few feet away from him, I will appreciate it if you didn't invade my personal space. Look, the next class starts in 10 minutes, can you just tell me what the hell do you want? Naruto usually doesn't curse, except for when he is in battle or when he gets insulted, but this woman was seriously starting to piss him off by just by standing there. Well. The blue-haired woman smirked seductively at him. I heard quite a lot about you, how you defeated big group of mafia members when you were just a teen, how you won many talent shows by using martial arts and weaponry expertly. I even heard that your grades were always at the top during your academic life, not to mention you were allowed skip few grades because of it. The Asian beauty said making, putting Naruto even more on edge. He then hears some rustling behind him and looks back to see Satellizer standing up, Miss Satellizer. He asked but didn't get a response as she stayed silent, hey, is everything alright? Naruto notices how uncomfortable she with this whole situation and gave her a small smile, sorry, things got a bit awkward here you can leave if you want. Sadlizer nods and walks past him and Miyabi. However, the third year decided to voice out her concern about something. Stop, do you actually think a second year can walk away without acknowledging her senior? Naruto glares at this slut's bullying, hey, only if the upperclassman deserves such an honor. She doesn't have to go out of her way to show respect for a nameless third year. Naruto hated how some people used their status of seniority to treat others badly. Himself being an orphan once, Naruto was subjugated to similar treatment like this. Only those who truly did terrific or honorable things deserve praise and respect. The third years are also supposed to be role models to the younger generations, but this woman brings shame to the very name Pandora. Miyabi looks back at Naruto, with her jolly mood completely forgotten, she quickly walks up to him until she is only few inches away and grabs his hand into a tight grip. That's it. I was trying to be nice to you, but that comment broke my last nerve. You're just like your sister, self-righteous to anyone who wants it. Still I will definitely let all of this slide by if you let me be your big sister. She proceeded to caress the blonde's cheek with a dark smile. I can make your life here much more pleasurable and fun if you say yes. I have no idea what you are trying to lead this conversation to. Naruto lied, hoping to get the girl off his back. I'm telling you that I want to make a baptism with you. Miyabi declared while sliding her hand along his arm sensually. Having enough, Naruto decided to end this interaction. Sorry, but I'm not interested in joining some girl's harem. Now, if you will excuse me, I want to take a quick nap before my next class begins. He shrugs her hand away and starts heading for his classroom, maybe he will get some shut eye there. You stupid bastard did you actually think that I let you leave after insulting me like that? Miyabi told the male Pandora with an obsessive glint in her eyes. Naruto heard Keiho and the other male from behind the roof entrance door quickly leave to find some help. He mentally smiled at their action, both from gratefulness for looking out for him and for the opportunity to have less witnesses. His annoyed look now turned into a cold, unforgiving one as he turned back to face the slut Pandora again, listen, and listen well, I'm willing to let this whole matter blow over if you let me go, but if continue to persist, I will against you all. Miyabi laughs loudly, clearly amused by this blonde statement, you retaliate ha. Huh? Now I can clearly see that you truly are Arnett's brother. John, Link, and Joe, teach him a lesson. Naruto sighs as one of the boys charges at him with a raised fist, well, don't say I didn't warn you. The blonde catches the incoming fist and starts applying pressure to it until the sound of some bones popping could be heard. A-H-H. Naruto then uses his other hand free hand to punch the boy straight into the jaw, breaking it and knocking out the one of limiter as well. Naruto leans to the right when the last two males try to attack him from behind together. He redirects the flow of one of the attacks with his hand, causing one of the attackers hit the other one, knocking him out from surprise. Naruto then kicks the last conscious boy into the air. The remaining limiter tried to scream, but didn't get the chance as Naruto grabbed his leg while he was still airborne and slammed him into the hard roof concrete. 
After taking quick glance at his handiwork to make sure the knocked out limiters are staying down, Naruto turns back at the slut Pandora, who was in a complete shock at how easily her limiters were defeated. I told you that I would retaliate although I didn't go for anything permanent, you should still take them to the infirmary to get treated. Naruto spoke in a laid-back voice. Yow you? Miyabi yells as she charges towards Naruto with a straight hook, but he manages to evade it by rolling to the right. Taking on three males in a fight is one thing, but catching a fist from a Pandora would be nearly impossible to lie about. Naruto eyes widen when he notices a leg coming his way fast. She must have made him think that she was too in enraged to think properly and led him into a trap. He defends himself by bringing his right hand up and forces the incoming attack back to its original position. Before Naruto can counter-attack, he felt the slut Pandora elbow him into the head, causing him to almost kiss the concrete, but he manages roll forwards in time and quickly get into a fighting stance. Damn it, she is good. Guess despite being a walking hormones bag, she has the skills befitting of her single-digit ranking. Naruto thought as he went from an aggressive stance into a defensive one, as Miyabi summons her volt weapons, which were several daggers that floated in the air, probably had enough of playing around and decided to finish this fight. And he could summon his no that was idiotic to even consider. His existence as a hybrid nova should be limited to him and the knight siblings for the moment. If he uses it against a Pandora, the chevalier will find out about it and would use it as an excuse to dissect him like a frog, that is not something on his to-do list that's for sure. Hmm. How could he? Oops almost got cut there. Naruto muttered silently to himself as he dodges Miyabi's incoming daggers. Sheesh, this was starting to become royally annoying, time to strike back. While Miyabi was busy trying to manipulate her volt weapons, she didn't notice how Naruto has thrown some yen coins from his pocket yeah, while most money transactions are done in electronic ways, Naruto still keeps some spare change in his pocket, just in case he ever needed it. The coins hit Miyabi straight in the face, causing her to close her eyes for a moment, which was more than enough time for Naruto to close the distance between them, and using the full maximum of human limited strength, punches her heart into the stomach. The Pandora staggers for a bit before she spins around, grabbing one of her floating daggers in the process, and tries to stab Naruto into his side, but with enough speed and strength, he manages to capture her arm and flips her over onto her back hard, you better stop this foolish attempt at trying to force me into being your limiter before I decide to cause some permanent damage. Screw you. Miyabi yells as Naruto gets into his Taikai stance. Then she vanished. Naruto realizes that this slut girl just used one the high-end skills. He remembered that there are at least three different types of this ability. Developed by Kazuha Aoi were two of them, the first one being the Tempest Turns, which allows Pandoras to create multiple after images of themselves. The second one is Axel Turn, which gives Pandora a temporary boost of speed that makes them hard to track. The third high-end skill was developed after Kazuha's passing and is only learned by truly dedicated and talented Pandora and is called Axel Tempest Turn, which allows Pandoras to use both of the first abilities at the same time. Naruto quickly spots Miyabi and is able to track her movements thanks to his enhanced vision, but despite being able to see her, it doesn't mean he is able to stop her well he can, but how would he ever explain that he was able to dodge an axle turn? He watches as Miyabi was coming at him for the kill. Damn it, is it really worth against her? He ponders as she was nearly a foot away from him. Guess I can't wait for Kakashi Sensei or Sasuke to save me this time. Duck. Reacting quickly, Naruto did as he was commanded and let his knees give way just in time to see Satellizer pass over him and kick Miyabi into the metal fence. The blue-haired girl slumps down to the floor and doesn't get up. Wow, it seems that Satellizer knocked her out in a single hit. Naruto whistles at the feet despite knowing he could do it himself, but it was just as refreshing to see someone else do it too. Naruto smiles gratefully at the blonde woman, hey, thanks. Satellizer. Naruto looks back to see Chiffon Fairchild and her vice president, Taisi Finel, look at the three knocked out limiters and the now knocked out Pandora with shocked faces. Wait. This isn't what it seems. Miyabi has. Before he can say anything else regarding the current situation, his sister, along with a very beautiful blonde haired woman, come onto the rooftop as well, Naruto. Are you okay? Did the slut touch you? I swear if she did, I'll why the hell is the untouchable queen next to you? She rushed over to her little brother to check if he was fine and then hold him in a back-breaking hug when she spotted the top-ranked second year standing not too far from him. Before anything can be misunderstood, Naruto gets out of his sister's grip and looks at Shifan. Listen, Miyabi tried to make me her limiter by force. He spoke as Shifan listened intently to his every word while Taisi went to get the teachers for medical help. She what Arnett yells as she was about to kick the unconscious girl, but thankfully her blonde friend held her in place. She sends in her three goons to up-persuade me into joining her, but I defended myself when one of them threw the first punch. 
then quickly dealt with the other two as they did the same thing, after beating them I was then attacked by Miyabi and had her on the ropes however, she had suddenly become incredibly fast and was going to stab me with her vault weapon. Thankfully, Satellizer L. Bridget managed to save me in time. Naruto spoke truthfully as he then moved his arm to present his new friend. Please, she didn't pick the fight, if anything, I was the one who did. I provoked the third year not just by denying her, but also angering her to the point of attacking me. Chiffon sighs, while she has known Naruto barely for a day, she knew he was telling the truth, but as a student council president, she can only make judgment based on facts, I'm sorry Naruto, but I only saw Sadlizer kick Miyabi to the point where she lost consciousness. Do not get me wrong here, I do believe you, but there is no proof that can back up your statement. You are still a new student here, along with Miss Adelizer having several incidents before this, also doesn't help the situation get any better. Hmm, incidents. Naruto thought as he saw Satellizer stand not too far from him. So I suppose she'll take the punishment that I was supposed to receive. He sighed, knowing how this stuff worked, after all, it happened to him a lot when he was judged as a demon back in Kanoha. Chiffon nods sadly, yes I'm sorry. Isn't there anything I can do for her? He said a bit louder than he intended, and Satellizer was able to hear it. He's actually defending me. Even though we just met. For some reason, the untouchable queen felt touched by the genuine kindness he was showing. Chiffon walks in front of Naruto and whispers, I'll make sure that her sentence will be only a slap on the wrist, because she hasn't injured Miyabi too seriously, but just this time. She spoke softly, hoping to reassure him a bit. The blonde Macmillan smiles gratefully as the teachers arrived and took away the reluctant satellizer, but not before Naruto gave her one last sad smile and mouthed out sorry. Whether she saw that or not, he didn't know as one of the teachers blocked the view. Naruto sighs and turns around to face an angry Arnett. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. Why the hell didn't you call for help? She yells out while doing her best to restrain herself from causing any more harm to Miyabi. Naruto shrugs while smiling, well, I did take out a mafia group by myself, when we were preteens you know. I thought I could handle her that is until she started using some freaky footwork. The beautiful blonde haired girl who arrived with Arnett and was silent up until now, smiled at the brother and sister duo and spoke, listen, how about we finish this conversation at a different location. I'd rather be out of here when Miyabi wakes up and have to dissy before Elizabeth can finish her sentence, Arnett puts a hand over her mouth. Decide to whether kick her or tell her about the punishment the teachers are gonna give her ha. Dot ha. Arnett said in an awkward tone, almost as if she was hiding something, but Naruto choose not pry into the subject since she is family. Well, come on. I made a special cake just for you. Arnett declared proudly. Hmm? You did? Naruto asked since he didn't know that Arnett could actually make sweet food. You'll see. The red-headed spoke in a cute mischievous tone, while tilting her head a bit. Naruto shook his head in amusement as he follows his big sister, fine, though it came out more in an exasperated voice than an excited one. Only his sister could tell the difference because of how close they are. West Genetics Pool Area. Naruto and the two Pandora walk up to a double door, and when they opened it, the former shinobi was greeted by a giant room with an equally huge pool within. Whoa, this is amazing. Didn't expect this academy to have a pool here of all places he trails off as he saw Creo standing near the pool edge with two other girls. The first one is a small, petite girl with short, silvery white hair and light brown eyes. Her hair is twisted into two curls tails at both sides of her head, giving it somewhat of a typhoon shape. So far she is shortest Pandora Naruto has ever, and she also has small breasts. But despite all of it, she is still a beautiful girl in her own right. The second one has back-length red hair and bluish-green eyes. She has long sideburns reaching past her shoulder and bangs right above her eyes. Despite her expression being somewhat cold and bitter, she still had a beautiful face. She also possesses an hourglass figure with cup-sized breasts. She wears the standard West Genetics uniform. Naruto sweat drops at how amazingly beautiful they were just like every other Pandora he has encountered so far. Is every Pandora out there in the world so beautiful? Man, I thought Mizukagi was hard to compare, and then there was Tsunade, Mikoto, Ka, Konan Wow. Dot. I really used to know a lot of bombshells back in elemental nations, why do I have a feeling I that missed out on something that I would regret? And why do I feel like Hiro Senen is laughing from beyond the grave? As he was thinking about the odd women he encountered in his lives, Atcha came up to him and tapped him on the shoulder, causing the blonde to look at her. Ah, yes. Hippolyte smiled as the girl blushed from how handsome his face looked. Despite what most of the general public says, limiters and Pandora don't always end up together after their careers end. It was just a marketing tool to make more limiters and Pandoras to join the genetic academies. Just wondering if you are really Arnett's brother. I'm Atcha Simmons by the way. 
Though she keeps pestering Arnett about the brother issue quite a lot and always receives an affirmative answer, she still finds it hard to believe that there was someone out that could be related to her eccentric friend. Naruto smiles, my name is Naruto McMillan and yeah, I am Arnett's brother. I was adopted into her family when I was found by her and my father during one of their trips. So, how did you meet my sister? Atcha shivers as her fingers curled up defensively, the first time she fraud and talked to his sister was when they had their first carnival and she lost to her, almost getting her fingers cut off in the process as well. It was quite an interesting meeting. Were your fingers cut off? Naruto concluded, shocking the small girl. You flexed your fingers and shivered a bit when I asked that question. Don't worry, Arnett may seem a bit much to handle, but she is a good person deep down very, very deep. He chuckles which seemed to relax Atcha. Indeed, but it's also very fun teasing her. Atcha giggles as she twirled her hair with her index finger. Naruto smiles mischievously as this was a perfect opportunity to get back a little at his sister for lying about the carnival. Here is some ammo you can use she used to wet the bed at the age of 12, and she always sleeps next to me whenever she can well, at least used to. He pats the petite girl on the shoulder while she was thinking on how to use the newfound information to embarrass the kind mad dog. The next to approach him was the red-haired girl. Greetings, I'm Ingrid Bernstein. Naruto took note of her stiff posture and formal greeting, and again sweat drops, great, either she's a sire or a less extreme danzo. The former sage could tell from her small giveaways that she was a moral compass for the academy, greetings to you as well. It's an honor to meet one of my sister's friends. Ingrid nods. Naruto really felt like the atmosphere was turning cold just by being near Hera, quick question, and possibly a stupid one, but what happens to students who break the rules? Almost instantly he noticed her eyes glow with eagerness, and she smiles faintly, for most Pandora it would be the hold. The hold? Naruto asked again. Ingrid's smile grew a bit more as she continues to answer, a prison, or more commonly known as the hold in prison terms. Most usually stay there for at least three days, a week being the maximum. Naruto now really felt like dirt that Saddleizer is taking his punishment for fighting Miyabi, I see extreme, but necessary for repeat offenders. After hearing that, Ingrid's smile grew even more and almost looked friendly almost, I agree I think you and I will get along with each other. If you ever need help with some troublemakers around the academy, don't hesitate ask me for it. Naruto watches her leave as he was then approached by the beautiful blonde haired girl, hello again, are you enjoying yourself? She asked politely. Quite, I appreciate for bringing me here. Wait are you by any chance Elizabeth? Arnett mentioned that your family is quite famous for their wine and cosmetics. Arnett even sent me some perfumes for men that she bought from you. Naruto said to Elizabeth who eyes went wide before she smiled brightly. Oh, I hope you enjoyed my family's product. We pride ourselves in making top quality merchandise and it's always good to hear positive comments. Elizabeth spoke back in a more happy tone. Naruto grins while scratching his head a bit, got to be honest with you, wasn't really into the whole perfume thing, as kind of thought that it was you know unmanly, but god was I wrong. Even now I'm ordering few bottles of the full moon and night's shade perfumes. Oh, those are quite expensive ones, but to be honest with you as well, despite them being for men, I kind of like them as well. Elizabeth walks up closer to Naruto and sniffs him a bit. Hum it really is a nice scent. It was really nice talking to you Naruto. I hope we can discuss more about this later oh, before I forget, if you want to order something more from my family's company come to me instead and I can get you a 50% discount. Sweet. If I can get those perfumes cheaper, I can save some money for those magazines I wanted. I also hear a new game station is coming out soon Naruto thought excitedly. Really, that's awesome. I'll be sure to seek you out when I need to order something again. Elizabeth nods while giggling a bit at his excited reaction. She then hears Atcha calling her and says that they will talk again later. After few moments pass, Naruto spots Kryo walking towards him, hey Kryo, nice to see you again. Likewise, but are you alright? I mean, getting attacked by a Pandora isn't exactly the best way to start your first day as a limiter. She said in slightly concerned tone. Naruto puffs his cheeks as if he had been insulated, hey, I can defend myself. HMPH, don't worry about it, if a small army of a mafia couldn't take me down, nothing will expect Novas, Cancer, and maybe a few atomic bombs, but yeah, that's all that takes to kill someone as awesome as me. Creo rolled her eyes at the huge boasting, yeah, you keep telling yourself that kid. Shot back in an amused voice while walking away and waving behind her shoulder. Naruto chuckled lightly at her words as he went to see his sister, hey Arnett, thanks for bringing me here and allowing to meet your friends. So why did you bake a cake again? Arnett smirks as she got out the pastry, happy birthday. She cheered loudly as did the rest of the gathered girls. Naruto laughs at the irony of him forgetting his own birthday, well technically double irony, since his birthday was at the same day he was born back at the elemental nations. Ha ha ha. 
Well, this is one hell of a surprise. I'm finally 16 years old, he, thanks sis. Naruto said smiling as he got his piece of cake and ate it, and it was great. Arnett usually sucks at cooking, but this time she really succeeded in making something good, and succeeded big. A small birthday party goes on for quite a while in a cheery mood, until Ingrid decided to speak up about something, hey Elizabeth, we should go to Satellizer and tell her about not. Not to worry. Everyone looks at Arnett who was blushing badly from yelling so suddenly. Naruto raises an eyebrow at her strange behavior she starts to sweat from nervousness, knowing of his detective skills prowess. Naruto, you should go and sleep. You need to wake up early for your usual daily jog. She said and was forcefully pushing Naruto towards the exit. When she successfully manages to get the confused blonde out of the room, she turns around and looks at her friends with a stern look, alright girls, I want you to listen to me very carefully about one thing do not, and I repeat, do not tell of our plans to my brother. Why, isn't that kind of bad to lie to him? He could be a great ally to us. Elizabeth asked as Arnett shook her head comically fast. Hell no. Listen, my brother is a very equal guy to everyone. He wouldn't understand the pain we went through here. So please, don't talk about our plans, at least until I get him to understand our ways. The kind mad dog of West Genetics begs. The girl sighed and nod, knowing that unlike the rest of the limiters, Naruto was not one to be easily coaxed into submission. While Arnett was glad that the girls will keep it a secret, but still worries about Naruto and the possible friendly connection he might have with the untouchable queen. She now worries if she should have been fully honest with her little brother. Family shouldn't keep secrets like that hidden from one another. Late at night, the holds. A shadowy figure was slipping towards the corners of the prison building and silently went past the guards. The figure, while crouching, silently dashed by the standing guards and then quickly sneaked towards the stairs that lead to the holding cells. Just before he walks down the stairs he looks at a glowing electronic chart that was not too from the stairs. The mysterious figure smiles as he saw the list of names of people who are currently being held in the prison cells, found ya. Naruto muttered silently before going down the stairs. Sadlizer was sitting on her rear end and sighing. She hated this, but at least she was able to help her new friend, if she can be allowed to call him that. He was so kind and different from everyone else she had ever met. He didn't look at her with leery eyes or with fear in them, no, those eyes held kindness that only two people in her life have ever showed. Rumble. She blushed at the unladylike growl of her stomach. She didn't even get to finish eating her hamburgers when they took her here. I'm hungry. Well, I guess it's a good idea that I bought some. An amused voice was suddenly heard. Sadlizer looks through her cell bars to spot a figure hiding in the shadows, who are you? Touch me and I'll. The figure raises his arms in defense, hey, hey. It's me. The figure walks out of the shadows to reveal sun-kissed hair and ocean blue eyes. Naruto McMillan. Sadlizer stood up and walks up closer to the bars to make sure it was truly him, why are you here? Did you also get into trouble? Nah, I sneaked in here. Naruto said as he rubbed his arm, not used to using his old shinobi sneaking skills again after such a long time. I came to formally apologize for getting you into this place. There is no need for an apology I didn't want you to be forced into something that would be disgusting to do the blonde buxom girl said before sitting back to the floor not too far away from the bars. Naruto for some reason felt both anger and fear radiating from her when she said those words. An odd combination to sense, but he decided not to pry about it and instead sat down as well with his shoulder leaning against the bars. After getting himself comfortable enough, he places a medium-sized bag on the ground and takes out its contents. Here. He passed through the bar's four smaller bags and places them within Satellizer's reach. She opens them up to see a big-sized hamburger from Burger Queen in each one of them. She looks at Naruto with shocked eyes, who in return smiles and nods. Thank you. She thanks him while stuttering a bit and then quickly proceeded to devour the fast food items. Naruto swear drops and chuckles nervously at how fast she had her food. Either she was really hungry or this is another mystery that only women know about. He thought to himself. I already ate dinner, but I wasn't sure if you were given any of it here, so I decided to buy you some burgers. I see wait, how did you get past the guards? Sadlizer asks only to receive a shrug in return. Sneaked past them, my sister thinks that just because I'm a loudmouth, it means I can't be as sneaky as a ninja. But don't worry about me, they won't find out. And whoa. You ate all those burgers already? Well she really ate fast, he didn't think that she would be finished with her meal that soon. The girl in question looks away, but Naruto notices that she was blushing hard from the embarrassment. Naruto smiles disarmingly, hey, hey, hey. Don't be embarrassed about it. I'm exactly like that when eat Raymond. Just can't control myself you know. Sadlizer looks back at him and Naruto he could have sworn he saw a small smile of gratitude appear in her face before it quickly disappeared. 
Naruto then leans with his back against the bars and just silently keeps satellizer Kampami, who is sitting in the center of the cell, while hugging her legs close to her chest. A few hours pass and Naruto could hear how it was beginning to rain outside, guess he will have to do his morning workout at his room if he doesn't want to get wet. They continue to sit in silence with only the sound of rain being heard from outside, that is until a giant crack of thunder suddenly boomed. Damn that scared me. Naruto said softly and felt a something warm touch his hand. As soon as the boy tried look back and see where the warmth is coming from, Satellizer spoke. Don't turn around please she shyly requested as she trembled from the sudden loud lightning. Naruto understood that she was possibly scared of thunderstorms and nods while keeping his back turned to her. Satellizer held his hand tightly as more thunderclaps came, though she did wonder why his touch didn't trigger her usual reactions, but at the moment she doesn't care as she just wants the storm to pass already. After another hour passes, the storm calms a bit but is still going strong. Through the heavy rain, Naruto suddenly heard light snores and deciding to risk it, looks back to see Satellizer sleeping on her side while still holding his hand. Wanting make her sleep a bit more comfortable, Naruto removes his uniform jacket while switching hands carefully, so Satellizer would still be holding one of them. He then gently covers her with the jacket so she would be at least a little more warm during the cold night. Uh, Naruto groaned. The Yuzumaki wore a worn tan cloak. The former ninja looked behind him to see something he never thought he would see again. Hanoha. The boy smiled as he heard footsteps approaching. Long time, no see team. Naruto looked up to see a boy wearing a black bow on a loose shirt. Sasuke. Yo, it's been a while since the war, the last Ichiha greeted. He slowly took a seat on the edge of a short wall. I've been watching you. I'm glad you got that family you always wanted. Naruto moved and took a seat next to him. How are things back home? Everyone misses you. Especially Hinata, Shizuka, Shion, Amaru, Kyoko, and a lot more people, Sasuke informed with a snide smirk. I honestly don't know how we are able to talk like this, but I'm sorry. For everything. Irisai. Naruto shouted as he lay on his back, smiling all the while. We're both alive and happy with you're not still trying to kill Kanoha, are ya? What? No. I just that he missed these silly conversation. So and are you going to get a girlfriend? Naruto bopped his friend on the head while blushing. Team. What? It's an understandable question. I mean, you've already met bombshells that make Hinata and Tsunade seem like sixes or sevens on the attractometer, Sasuke declared. I mean, your sister, her friends, and a bunch of others. Naruto sighed as he felt lightheaded. Looks like I'm going back. Hey if you're the real Tema tell everyone that I'm fine and living happily. I will. The holds. Naruto felt a swift kick to his stomach. He tried to ignore it, but it happened again, sheesh, Arnett. I'm up. I'm up. The boy tried to lift himself up, but fell back down. MMH. The sound of moaning instantly shocked the boy awake like a gallon of coffee. The boy realized that he was some kind of stone floor, but that wasn't the big thing about the situation. The real issue was that his hand was between a pair of really big and oddly very soft breasts. Sadlizer L. Bridget was sleeping soundly while making barely inaudible snores. Behind her Naruto saw his homeroom teacher Yumi. This looks bad, huh? Naruto sweat dropped for the likely lecture to come, but. Yumi was a bit more concerned with the fact that Naruto was holding hands with the untouchable queen and was still breathing. And living. And not in pain. Or begging for death. Hell, if anything it seemed to comfort the girl. Whenever she found herself here she was usually in a bad mood and stayed awake for hours on end. But, to see her so docile and weak was both fascinating and tempting. She wanted to touch those big, software the hell that came from Yumi mentally slapped her face, pulling a Kuzuha. She looked to see Naruto, who was gone. In his place was a note which said. Wasn't going to stay and be yelled at. Sorry. Also, if you can bring me back or send my school jacket to my room, I'd really appreciate it. I mean, it's not your problem since technically it's mine. You know what, never mind. I'll ask El Bridget to do it. Oh yeah, by the time you finish reading this, I'm already gone. Ha 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 eyebrow twitched at the note. She then spotted a curved arrow pointing down, signaling there was more on the back of the note. She turned it over, only to grow even more irritated as another tick mark appeared above her brow. The back contained a single word. Ha. She sighed as she opened the cell door to wake up Satellizer and retrieve the article of clothing. She pulled on the jacket only to be rewarded with a swift punch to the gullet. The active Pandora was about to bring out her volt weapon, only to sweat drop as she discovered that the other Pandora was still snuggling deep into the jacket and refused to let go. This was so not worth the benefits. But Naruto. The blonde was practicing with his volt weapons while lost in thought. Sadlizer that girl reminded him of, well, himself. The constant stares and dark glares. 
The people talking behind his back and the assholes who would try to make him bow before their feet. Naruto felt bad for the girl. If anything, she wouldn't hurt a fly based on yesterday's interaction. Her quiet and shy nature was nothing like her cold and stoic facade in the carnival. Don't judge a book by its cover, Naruto sadly muttered to himself. The fear of being alone was still one that gripped his heart like an icy talon. He suffered through that torment once and didn't want to go through it again. Yosh. Naruto yelled as he made up his mind. I'll help her. I won't let her go down the path that Gara, Killer B, and I went through, the blonde Macmillan promised. He hears shuffling and felt someone coming to his location. He quickly dismissed his weapons just as Satellizer appeared. Ah uh he. Satellizer nodded. An awkward silence hung in the air. This is a silent thing is going to happen a lot, huh? The former Yuzumaki said with a smile as he attempted to lighten up the mood. Satellizer looked at Naruto with a confused expression. Why did you help me? Huh? Well, it was the right thing to do, the teen confessed. This answer on seemed to confuse the second year even more. But, didn't you hear the rumors about me? Naruto smiled childishly as he shook his head. Nope. Nope. Yup. I never much cared for rumors. Most of the time it's like a stupid version of telephone with all the talking, Naruto plainly stated. Sadlizer felt an unknown feeling. It wasn't like last night, but it was still pleasant. However, I see thank you for giving me a chance, but for your own sake, please stay away from me. I wouldn't want you to get into trouble with the third years as well. Nope. Not gonna. Naruto childishly chimed again, the smile never leaving his face. Listen. I don't know what the rumors are about or what you did to make them and honestly I don't care. I can see that you want to be strong along with your own need to have some alone time, but don't let that stop you from finding me if you want to talk. The blonde-haired teen said as he patted her shoulder and left. Sadlizer could only smile at the rare kindness she received, but frown knowing that she might drag him down for having her as a free end it wasn't right. But mate. With Arnett. Arnett was happily swimming in the pool. She was happy since her brother came to the school. Now that her best friend was back, she can't help but smile. Though, the smile slowly disappeared as she thought about untouchable queen who apparently helped her brother. She knew about the rumors surrounding the queen about hurting anybody that touched her. The stories about the violent beatdowns were numerous. Of course, like her brother, she didn't believe them. That was, until she happened to see firsthand what she did to a limiter who constantly asked her to be his Pandora. That limiter was still in the hospital to this day. Arnett had no clue why the other Pandora did this, but knew if her brother continued to friends with her he may. Arnett stopped swimming as the heated pool could not stop her blood running cold at the thought. She will never let that happen to her. She pulled herself out of the pool as her mind conjured by ways to make her brother pull away from El Bridget. She and her friends already decided to have Ingrid fight Satellizer later tonight in the girl's dorm. The question remained of Naruto Arnett sweat dropped. Knowing her brother, he would punch at Tsunami to save a kitten and most likely live and win. She looks at the room's calendar. Today was Sunday, so no classes today. Though Chevalier may be an international government, it decided to go with Japanese school system and only had Sunday off. The Pandora trained hard so they could do whatever they wanted on Sunday like going into the city. Arnett smiled in victory as she went off to find her friends for this plan. A few minutes later. Say what? Elizabeth, Ciro, and Acha all chimed together in response to their friend. Arnett only had a cheesy grin. We are going to have a date with my brother. Ciro just lifted her hand as Elizabeth and Acha handed their student credits to her. I won the bet. Honestly, I thought it was going to take months to have all of us. After she said that they were all hit by an angry Arnett welding a paper fan. Jerks. I meant we'll distract him by taking him to the city while Ingrid will fight Satellizer. This will allow us to tell him about her, strengthen our bonds, and have fun oh, and making sure that the order in the school is fine. Arnett smiled as her friends looked at each other with weak smiles. They know it's a good plan but it was coming from a battle-loving nut. Still, they had to make sure that Naruto wouldn't be around for the upcoming battle. From what Arnett told them, if a mafia didn't scare him into fleeing, they were pretty sure that a single Pandora wasn't going to do any good. Alright, I'll approve of this. Just get Naruto and I'll get some passes from Headmistress Margaret, Elizabeth said while having an amused smile etched on her face. Arnett smiled gratefully as she left to find her brother. Ciro just lifted her hand again to get more credits, and this one is for Arnett asking him before any us. Never bet against Ciro. With Naruto. Naruto was mediating in his room as he tried to control his strength. It was a daily ritual to ensure he was always focused. He sighed in peace as he concentrated on controlling his anger and ignoring other possible distractions that could make him lose focus. Naruto, I'm home. Arnett yelled loudly as she kicked open his door. So much for peace. Naruto looked and saw his sister wearing something weird. She wasn't wearing uniform, but a red miniskirt that had a cute belt around it. 
along with white button shirt that had a red half jacket on top of it. Hey Naruto. The girls and I were going to the city to cut loose. Want to come? She asked excitedly. Okay, maybe she was lying about the plan and just wanted to have fun. Barnett, well really appreciate the opportunity to join with you, I don't think it's fair for me to be with your friends who I just met then go to the city. Maybe next time, Naruto said, disappointed that he can't go. Well he did become friends with him, it was mostly because of his sister and didn't want to push his luck. Barnett pouted at his lame attempt to get out of having fun. She then strikes a sexy look. Come on, you're going on a date with incredibly hot and sexy women. How can you still say no? Are you sure you're not gay? Arnett teasingly said, hoping her plan might work. I'm not gay. You know what I'm coming to. Let's go. Naruto yelled and stomps out of his room. Arnett did a victory sign with her fingers. She was about to walk out with her adopted younger brother, but stopped. Okay, you are so not going out licketh it. She pointed at him from head to toe on his school uniform. Get dressed and meet me at the gates. Everyone should be there. Naruto shrugged. He really missed his own dimension. You only ever need the one style of clothing. This universe sucks. Ten minutes later. Arnett and her friends were waiting at the gate. They smiled as they thought about the plan for Naruto. He. This is going to be so much fun. Elizabeth smiled and nodded. I agree. I heard that there's a virtual reality game in the local arcade in the city. We can definitely go there since you said he loves those games, she said as Elizabeth straightens her hair from the high ponytail she was using. She wore a white summer dress with a black choker. The leader of the third years had black stockings with white heels. She also had pale cherry lipstick perfectly added on her lips, making her allure almost impossible to not notice. Then we can try that noodle restaurant I went to. I think the kid would like it since it serves ramen. Also, there's that cheap and I'm shop he can browse through, Ciro added her suggestions. The German girl wore black pants and a white button shirt which had a black vest. The look gave boyish front to match her strong personality. Atchus eyes. I think we are doing a bit too much for a distraction. Ciro smirked at her. Says the girl who dresses like a gothic lolita with her hair down. Who's doing a bit much? She said as she saw her friend wearing a beautiful gothic dress with black veils similar to a maid's outfit. She also had her hair down which was only shoulder length. Arnett laughed at the blushing face of her verbal abusive friend. Ha. And holy cow. Play. Battle without honor or humanity. The girls all became slack-jawed when Naruto came out. He walked slowly the wind pushed his cloths tight across his body, showing off the fruits of his training. His nova factors didn't hurt his look either. His hair was slicked back, giving him a more mature look. His aura given off from his professional smile on his perfect non-blemished face that could make even angels envious. He also had baggy long cargo pants with a loose knot tied belt, which oddly went well with the rest of him. He also had a blue and orange shirt which was embroidered with a series of gears. To top it off, he had a pair of orange-tinted small circular sunglasses. Barnett was the first one to blush and shake off the shock of her brother Swilsh honestly had no words to describe it. Sheesh, this embarrassing. He's my little brother for God's a Kestil it's refreshing to see look so handsome. Arnett truthfully thought to herself as Naruto kept walking. Elizabeth was also able to break from the odd moment off whatever she was so enthralled by. I must say, even Andre couldn't look that dashing, even if he had the world's best designers working for him. Naritono. Not once has he even looked at like an object to drool over, and I must do the same for him. This was true. Elizabeth Mabley was lusted after by every male in the school except for Naruto. The first time she had met her limiter and later preformed the baptism, she also saw that hint of lust, not love. But Naruto only saw her as a woman, not thing, not some goddess, just a simple girl. She always saw in his eyes three things amusement, honesty, and strength. She felt honored to know such a gentleman and a good friend. Well, maybe a good friend in the near future. Elizabeth had to hold her giggles, or lest her loyal doggy will bite her rear end. Ciro had the least shock on her face from seeing Naruto I might have to stop calling him kid. She can tell from his body that he went through hell. Masta hell, who was she kidding? All of the limiters were all weak and whipped if she can use that American term right. Naruto, like her best friend slash roommate Arnett McMillan, was tougher than any metal from hell. His eyes spoke to her. They said. I am a kind individual but not a pushover. His confidence was a refreshing from the usually spineless male she encountered. She smiled at her friend Atcha, who was the only still stuck in dreamland. Well, if you dress this well for dates I might want to call off my limiter with you. Stop music. Naruto chuckled at the comment. Uh, too much. I was wondering which outfit I should go with and decided to go with the plain look. I knew I should have left the shades behind. Barnett let out a wolf whistle. Go bro. I knew behind the laziness you can look good for a girl. Maybe I don't have to watch over your dates after all, she joked. 
mostly. She will if it was Satellizer or, God forbid, Miyabi. Naruto just gave a nervous smile, eh <laughs> anyway should we go. I really interested in what the city holds. The girls nodded just as the monorail to the city arrived. They ran towards it. The group sat in their seats while Naruto stood. He looked out the window, but suddenly his phone rang. The boy took it out to see the ID was Nero Hello. Naruto answered as quietly and cossily he could without arising suspicion. Naruto. Good. I have news to tell you, but I can't over the phone. Listen, I got you a pack of gate at one of those mail stations box lots. So whenever you can this week, go to the city and go to Rise Rush Delivers. And tell the manager that you're Siratobi you, and they'll give you my pack of gay, Nero said as he sounded irritated. Naruto nodded. Actually, this couldn't be better. I got a pass to head towards the city. I'll just pick up the pack of gay there before I leave. And our you Naruto was interrupted by a loud crash. Wipe out, wipe out. God damn it. Emma, hold on to your toy. Sorry, Nero. Naruto, can't talk. Making Emma a birthday gift, but went south. Just grabbed the thing and contact at midnight. Naruto stared at the phone for a few moments before letting out a very confused. The fuck. Minutes later. Naruto was playing in an arcade with his sister. They played Persona 4 Arena. Can't touch me. Naruto shouted happily. Arnett growled as she was losing badly. Five losses, no wins, and Naruto had ten straight perfect battles. Oh, come on. I lost again. Elizabeth and the third years clapped as they saw their friend lose. Wow, I didn't think Arnett would lose to a fighting game, Kinda figured it would be at least a few close calls, and not a total slaughter. Screw you. You try beating him at something like this. He's never lost a game in his life. Arnett yelled while comically crying tears from the humiliating loss. Zero stepped up at the challenge. Alright. Challenge accepted. Naruto sighed tiredly, okay, which one? Zero looks and pointed to the VR section. There. House of the Dead 9. Let's see who gets the most kills and highest score before we die. She declared, ready to beat him. His only response was a shrug. It wasn't even five minutes into the battle that Zero took off her VR helmet. Damn, the graphics were so real I kept hesitating until I just froze up and lost my entire HP. Elizabeth patted her softly on the shoulder. Don't worry. I think Naruto isn't going to much either. So what's your score? S rank. I may have been scared, but I didn't stop throwing my punches, Siro proudly stated. Woo. Shit, that was almost accurate as the real thing, but also insulting to Kabuto, Naruto said as he stretched. Zombie games aren't really scary if you've fraud against real and Eswo still have their intelligence. Batsha smiled at Naruto. So what did you got? Oh nothing. Let's move on the next game, Naruto hastily said. Before he could react, Siro snatched his helmet, took a look, and paled. SSSS rank. No hits, killed all zombies, without getting a single HP down. The Pandora bleaches out from the impossible feat. All zombies are slow and who in their right mind would stay in a single spot to die. Now Siro was squatting next to Arnett with a dark cloud over their heads. Ahe Naruto's laugh was interrupted by his stomach loudly growled. He blushed while rubbing the back of his head. Uck no a place where a guy can eat. The girls laughed together. They all decided to get some noodles at the restaurant. Naruto smiled at the kindness of the Pandoras while he ate his bowl of ramen. Ah. Such delicious food. While needed to keep a strict diet to maintain his body, it never hurt to indulge in his favorite meal once in a while. The boy realized something. Hey, where's Miss Ingrid? The girls all choked on their meals at the question. They all blushed at having made the mistake of not explaining away the missing girl. However, before they could answer Arnett's phone rang. She checked it to see that Ingrid was about to fight Satellizer. Naruto finished his meal and stood up. Well, I need to go back. I need to go do some work Miss Yumi gave me for sleeping in class, he was about to leave, but was held in place by Arnett. She gave him the biggest puppy eye look possible. Come on. Why now? We still can have fun. She pleaded. She hoped that her brother won't help Satellizer with his kind heart. Arnett, you know I can't do that. Besides, I need to get a gift from a friend too. He lightly pushed off his sweet sister's soft hand and went to the store he needed to go. Siro had a serious look. This is bad. Miyabi was one thing, but Ingrid won't let Naruto off easy if he interferes with the battle. Elizabeth's side nodded from the fact. We can't just outright say that either. Arnett, are you sure that you hiding this will be fine? Of course. It's for the best. So he will be fine and Arnett trailed off, not confident with her words. If it did go as it planned it will he actually hate her? Why? Why does the thought of Naruto hating me scare me more than when I thought my father was about to die from a mafia attack? West Genetics. Naruto held a small box that was the size of two basketballs, my wonder what Nero built to help him hack into the system. Naruto stopped as he felt the ground shake. Whoa. 
the hell. That sounded like it came from the girl's dormitory. The boy put the box on the ground to rush in that direction. Burr. The box's top opened as a little item jumped out of the cardboard prison. It looked around dumbly before it disappeared. If one listened they could still hear the sound of gears moving. Naruto soon discovered the source of the sounds. Satellizer was fighting Ingrid. Ingrid had a confident smirk plastered on her face. The reason? She had Satellizer in a freezing field. I'll give you one more chance to surrender and apologize to the seniors for overstepping your place. Face the facts, without a limit or your weak as. Whatever word she was going died in her throat as the freezing field dissipated. Hey, what's ah? The red-haired girl gasped in shock seeing Naruto holding her unconscious limiter by the collar of his school jacket. Why? Naruto gave a disapproving look that unsettled her resolve. When you fight someone, at least have audacity to fight them with your own skills. Though it's kind of hypocritical talking about honor while being a former shinobi Naruto lamented, but did not show it when speaking to Ingrid. You don't know anything, Macmillan. Seniors must be respected and be in control of the school or the whole place fall into anarchy. Satellizer has disrupted the flow. Ingrid growled. While she was speaking he failed to notice that Satellizer was about to bring down her sword to Ingrid's head. Damn. Naruto, however, got between them to stop the attack. This put him in an awkward position, much like Rock Lee did in the Chunin exams. Naruto stopped both of the girls with his limited strength, thanking his luck the girls hesitated at last second. His left leg was locked onto Ingrid's arm, stopping her in place while holding Satellizer's wrist. The two girls were surprised at the bravery, to everyone else the stupidity balls guts to do that. Of the blonde. Enough. The raw edge of Naruto's voice immediately overpowered the will of the two girls. Sadlizer, may I have the pleasure of having your solemn vow that you will not attack Ingrid. The same goes for you Ingrid. The Pandoras only continued to glare at one another. Naruto applied some pressure to his limbs to remind them of his presence. I'm waiting. PCH understood. I won't assault the untouchable queen as long as she also promises to. Ingrid blushed at being strong-armed like into this. Naruto smiles warmly at her in thanks. If it wasn't for the circumstances she would have blushed. She finally noticed how handsome he looked in his current attire and really blushed this time. Satellizer. Naruto's voice went cold again. Satellizer's reply was to make her weapon disappear. Naruto returned the same smile to her this time. Thanks again Satellizer looked away in embarrassment from the contact, smile, and thanks. It was like he was able to make any woman listen to him either by force or kindness. The two girls slowly separated from each other. They continued to glare at one other by none of them looked ready to continue the fight. Ingrid, be honest. This isn't about your ideals. It's about Marin Maxwell. Naruto suddenly started making, Ingrid gasp in shock. Before you ask how I found out such classified information about that attack, let me only say I know a guy one knows a guy which led to a guy's cousin. Hew everyone sweat dropping from the lame tone and reason. Ingrid gained a look that seemed a little happy, but mostly something else. Then you understand what she did. It was because she was. Scum, Naruto interjected. Ingrid's face was instantly filled with rage from that single word from Naruto. Even Satellizer was so shocked that her mouth hung open in surprise. What did you say Ingrid yelled in rage. Scum. Must I repeat it. Naruto's voice was one of exhaustion and disinterest, not at all afraid of the girl's anger. If he can stop a goddess and a ten-tailed monster, he wasn't going to be scared from a slightly enhanced soldier. Wham. Ingrid moved quickly and punched Naruto so hard he went flying towards the sofa more. Satellizer caught him. Are you alright, Sadlizer yelled with concern she did not know she was capable of expressing. Naruto's only response was to cough a few times. All brought out blood, but one really nasty one contained a tooth. Naruto wiped the blood off his mouth and stood up. Fuck did hurt he mean like a lot. Ingrid glared at him. Be glad you're the brother of a good friend like Arnett. Where the hell do you get off calling my best friend scum? She screams, but only saw him laughing quietly. <laughs> Naruto's laugh started off quiet, but grew louder the longer it drew on. Where do I get off? Oh god, is this what they call the pot calling the kettle black? Such hypocrisy. He took a menacing step forward. Ingrid took a step back from the sheer oddity of his behavior. What about you? You were with her in her last moments and were not able to truly understand what her words and actions meant. He continued to take steps towards Ingrid who responded by taking just as many steps back. Don't lecture me on my friend. She died because of the weak and cowardly underclassmen. She yelled back. Ingrid realized she was losing ground. The girl's dormitory was rapidly approaching her back, and Naruto was closing in on the front. Did you mean the ones who were ordered to retreat? Naruto questioned without stopping. He continued his slow and methodical pace towards Ingrid. The German girl's eyes widened at his statement. What? She tried to take a step back, but she finally ran out of room. 
Her back met the dormitory wall. I spoke to a girl from my neighborhood who quit being a Pandora from that experience. She told me that your friend told her to escape while she bought time. Naruto sadly spoke. The distance between the two closed even more as he continued to walk. She gave me an audience with her and her friends. They let me ask them questions about what happened. All of them, without fail, told the same story. Do you know what that means? Ingrid's confused expression stayed for a moment before it hit her harder than a Nova partial beam. She sacrificed her life for them, but they should have been there for her. It wasn't right. Naruto finally reached her and stood in front of her. Wasn't right. Listen to me. Life's fucked up. Life doesn't care who you are or what you do. Some people can live to be 100 and live in the lap of luxury. Others can only get that far after decades of hard work. Ingrid, life's not fair. If it was, we wouldn't have Novas attacking the world, Marin would be alive, and a whole bunch of other shit. You throwing a temper tantrum like this mean you're disrespecting what your late friend stood for. Naruto took one final step to Ingrid, putting their faces very close. The third year blushed from the close proximity, but had one thing left to say, I thought you said she was scum -a. She gasped, a little from pleasure from her sensitive body. Why? Ingrid did not see his arms until they were already around her. He held her tightly as he said the thing that would finally break her emotional wall. I didn't mean by me though the government she might be scum for not letting her comrade stay. He loosened his grip so he can look at Ingrid's face. He got a good look because their faces were almost a kissing distance. Naruto reached up and tucked a loose strand of her red hair behind her ear. He gave her a huge smile. I met a man who taught me to be strong and to care for my friends and family. People who abandon protocol, orders, or missions are considered trash and scum. Ingrid saw Naruto's eyes hold so much sadness and respect for her. But people who abandon their friends and teammates are considered worse than scum and trash. If another time I would be incredibly Honrich did something so few can don't have no regrets. Ingrid's filled with tears at Naruto's words. She reached out and held Naruto in a tight hug. He still spoke. Ingrid, don't let her death be a chain that ties you down. Let her death be the foundation to become even stronger with your underclassmen. The girl broke down and sobbed quietly. She could only manage a small nod with the sniffles coming from her mouth. Naruto slowly caressed her back with smooth motions. It's okay it's okay you can still change. Sadlizer could only watch and be amazed by the boy's words and slightly, could she actually say it? Jealous from the hug and the salvation that Ingrid currently possessed. She sighed. Before she can walk away she turned to see Naruto behind her with a calm and slightly red flustered Ingrid. Thank you so much for letting me talk to her, Sadlizer. The girl could only play with her dress before nodding back. She turned around to hide her face. Thank you for assisting me despite what I said. She received a pat on her shoulder. We're friends. Anytime. If you need my awesomeness, just let me know. He said grinning knowing she can feel it as she giggled silently. Seriously, if you need come to my room or meet me at lunch. I'll be waiting. Hey Ingrid, can I count on you not to attack her? Because I can't handle the stress of two friends fighting again. The girl seems shocked. You're offering to be friends despite I knocked out a tooth and hurt you. Eh? Weren't we friends already? And don't worry it was wisdom tooth so it wasn't anything important. Naruto said with smile. The smile was the widest he'd given during the entire event. She could tell because there was still some blood between his teeth. Despite the blood, the smile was still warm and friendly. Ingrid nodded and returned a smile of her own. MMH. She hums in confirmation while she wiped a tear away. Whether that tear was from happiness or relief made both only she can answer that. Naruto walked away from her and Satellizer and headed for his room, be nice to each other. The two girls didn't glare at each other, but you need help fixing your room? Naruto's room. Naruto smiled as he spotted Nero's toy waiting for him on his bed. No freaking way. Nero, you mad genius. I know. Naruto continued to smile as he looked at the toy. It was small robot with a tablet-like screen for an arm and two bipedal feet which ended in wheels. The machine also had two optical cameras. They were looking around curiously, taking in the entire room. They turned to Naruto, and the apertures tightened as they zoomed in on the blonde. The arm screen showed a smiling Nero and Emma. My friend, I told you my job gives great perks. Naruto laughed lightly. He tried to keep quiet to prevent anyone from listening in. So this little guy is from your job. Nero nodded while laughed. Yeah. My company had a huge surplus on these things. I asked the girl who handles the supplies and she gives all I need. Though, she always seemed to have a fever when I see her. Uo Emma's cheeks puffed out in annoyance as she was green with envy. Naruto could only bite his knuckles to keep from laughing. Emma had a huge brother complex with her stepbrother Nero. He was actually rooting for them to hook up. They'd definitely be perfect, Nero needs to see it. And who doesn't like a forbidden romance? 
At that exact moment, Karen and Arnett sneezed at the same time in their respective dimensions. This little guy let's call him Seeker. So Seeker will hack into the mainframe? Naruto asked. Seeker wheels around the floor before sitting down like a dog. No, I'm trying to make an AI system, but that will take months to finish. So I'll use him as a mobile terminal and hack from my house through him. I'll send any data back to my main computer here. Then, I'll have totally access to the system without the risk of being caught. Maybe we'll find that Nova tissue after all and those high-end skills too. Nero explained as Emma smiled. Oh, Naruto. Is it true that you have to be paired up with a second-year Pandora Eek, that's so romantic? A girl confessing her love for her fellow soldier in bloody battle of despair, well hope Emma continued to say more beautiful things. Nero rolled his eyes. Oh geez, this is what I get from buying her the cheap romance books. Send me a message when you are ready to get the files. See you when I see ya. Seeker's arm screen went black, and the small robot folded the screen into its side. It rolled under Naruto's bed and out of sight. You sure you like under there? Burr -wur. Okay. So I'm going to train now. If anyone comes, hide. He told the machine as he left. The blonde exited his room and headed for the secluded forest to train with his vault weapons. Hours later. It was midnight as Naruto practiced with Yamato. He was cutting tree branches to train his accuracy. There. Switching to Vanguard. Naruto dismissed his katana and summoned his shield and longsword. Forming time on my weapons has improved greatly. He was about to continue his training until he heard twigs snap unnaturally, know who's there. Naruto heard footsteps and saw a female that he never thought would see his abilities, what are you doing here? Naruto stood there as the girl in front of him saw him holding his weapon, Yarahakrap what's your name again? He asked with cheerful apologetic look. Thud. The girl face vaulted at the comment as she stood with tick mark on her face, Ticey. Ticey Fennel. Naruto hits his hand on an open palm instantly remembered her, oh yeah crap. Please tell me you didn't see that. He freaked out as the girl nod making cry waterfall tears. Aw oh, man. However the blue-haired girl didn't leave, but just took a deep breath, can can you tell something? Naruto got out of his childish sadness and nods seriously, yes. Ario Nova. She asked slightly nervous about the boy, while slowly getting ready to get in battle position. Naruto closes his eyes she doesn't really know himself anymore it was never taken to the hospital, since he was always in tip-top health. He never got sick and always ate healthy food, the only time he ever went was only health examinations. Ever since Nero was able to find out his body was in symbiotic relationship with this Nova Tish Naruto was always afraid if he was going to be a monster to kill his own sister. Nonetheless he was him and that was all that materitum human for, as long as I can remember I had this power but I don't really have the faintest idea how or why I have it. The former shinobi of Konoha honestly told the girl. It was a lie nor the whole truth, he never still understood why the woman gave him the power or her intentions either. Did she want an ally against humans? Was she a rouge agent and wanted to help humanity? Or was it simply out of whimsy? She was factor in an impossible equation that that can't be solved. He can never understand or perhaps never cares it was his powers now, and he'll use to protect his loved ones. Please understand that if Chevalier ever found I'll probably be dissected on a table plus don't tell anyone. The girl seems to have expression on understanding that he was telling the truth he understand your situation but this level of destruction, she faces the destroy trees and scatter remnants of said broken pieces of wood. Haha, <laughs> I guess it my fault there. Since I had no real education on Thysi went for power. Naruto nervously said from the sad truth. He may be a more physical powerful fighter, but he needs also speed and some defensive abilities. Once you get a taste for high speed, battles it tends to be addicting as sexnet that he experience it sex that is. I see suddenly gain compilation look, I have an idea. The next morning. Naruto was throwing punches at the air in his room, still a little odd out at the request from Taisi. He continues to do this until his door open. Hello. He saw his eye at Aoi along with a blonde hair boy smiling, Naruto-san, we heard what happened from Keiho. You're awesome. The other male said. Oh, my name is Arthur. I and Kazaya are your neighbors. We didn't get the chance to say hey so he. As Aya rubs the back of his head, a sorry for this literal rude awakening. The blue-haired lad spoke with an apologetic tone. So how are you? Keiho told us you lost a tooth yesterday. Naruto shrugs, yeah, but it was a wisdom tooth so I should be paying Miss Ingrid for that. He laughs with the two other boys as well. You learn how to use Kenpo. Cause Aya said impress with Naruto's combat abilities. Naruto's eyes slightly rose up at the mention of martial arts, you know it. The Japanese male nods as he gained an odd look of reminiscent and melancholy, yeah, my sister taught me, so some basics of judo, karate, and some kenpo. The former hero nods in respect before sighing, man, I'm starving. When's breakfast? I think Burger Queen is available no if you don't mind paying for the meal. 
Or you can wait for another half hour for the chefs to start cooking. Arthur said as Naruto sighs in defeat. Sure, but I am not buying for you too. He childishly said as the shinobi went out first. The senior pool. Barnett jaw dropped at what Ingrid told them last time, you didn't fight Satellizer after Naruto left. No, as I promise him. I believe in what he said about Miyabi. The German girl said whose friends nodded at what she said. Elizabeth cups her chin with her left hand thinking about the events, he is so charismatic that he was able to help Ingrid and stop the fight. She knew that he was special butamazing was able to help her friend from her self-destructive path. But this is bad in more ways than one. I know that look you concerned about the boy too. Ciro said as she probably knew what their leader arrived at. Huh? What do you mean? Arnett asked as her friends nod to each other. Elizabeth looks at her friend, it is clear that Naruto has a sort of attachment to the untouchable queen. This means that he is willing to help against us. Arnett took step forward with a dark look, I sincerely hope that you are not insinuating that we hurt or in any way harm my brother. No. I was going to say that girls that listen to our rule may go against her. Not to mention that if she asks to make baptism, other girls will try topical dissuade me either violently or sexually. Elizabeth calmed her friend as Arnett stood still and threw one chairs at the pool. If any of them touches him, I'll fucking kill them. She yells as she brought her scythe out. Ciro sighs at this, look, we owe crap. She dodges a chair as Arnett was still piss. She looks at the rest of the girls as she knew this was going to be a while. Wanna grab some food? I have craving for some burgers. The rest of the girls agreeing ducking from more furniture from Arnett's fit. She needs some time alone. Cafeteria. The boys were in awkward position as they were in front of the third year Pandora to get burgers, well this is awkward. Naruto chirped as the girls seemed to enjoy his laid back attitude. Uh, come on let them go first. Arthur said as Naruto went to Siro with stoic look oh crap. So what are you girls buying? It's my treat. Naruto said smiling as the girls nod to the deal. He was about to ask what they wanted before seeing Satellizer from outside. Uh, sorry. I'll have to pay next something came up. The girls watched him leave totally forgotten as he rushed to the girl he wanted to help. Naruto waves as he saw Satellizer, hey Satellizer. Um. The beautiful young woman turns to see the kind blonde hair teen. Naruto she gave a small smile unknowingly. Yo, I was wondering if you wanted to grab a bite to eat. My treat. The hero of the elemental nation said hoping to make some time with her. However the girl blushes as she spoke, Naruto. Arnett came out from the swimming pool trying to find her friends until she saw Naruto with Satellizer. She hid behind back to a corner as she eavesdrops to hear what the sophomore was saying. Can you please touch me? What? The two siblings spoke exactly at the same time completely lost at the request from the untouchable queen. Iwawet. The two still continuing to speak as one before Satellizer took the male blonde's hand. She gently places it on her cheek nuzzling slightly to the amazing warmth from the boy's body. Naruto's face gains a slight blush from the action and this odd feeling that's making his heart light and happy. Miss Satellizer. He said quietly as she looked at him with weak yet endearing eyes that would make any rouge in back at his dimension blush from the sheer beauty. That wasn't my image in Ashan whenever you touch me I don't remember those awful memories from back then. Rather it feels like you're shielding me from any danger. She gently spoke unknowingly seductively as Naruto's eyes slightly turned soft. Naruto I know it's probably not the best thing to say especially we only known each other for only a few days. Arnett eyes widen at what the girl might be insinuating, she wouldn't. I wish for it to be my limiter did Oya accept. She squeaks out the lasts together as Naruto stood there dumbfounded at a request. I Naruto calms down in his he did need to make Pandora choose him for next year. And they said it have to be single year difference between the two partners. She seems to have some social problems so he can help her with that. I accept, if you'll have me though if you need to drop me for someone else. I will not blame you. Sadlizer shakes her head as she turned red, would you like to have breakfast with me? She pulls out a Burger Queen bag with the scent of freshly made ground meat in Naruto. Heh, you really do love burgers huh? Sure, but I won't be able to have lunch with you today, since a friend is asking for my help. He said as she nod and walk with him to eat in peace. Barnett face was the very meaning of horrified as she gripped the wall she was using, which had two holes from her strength going into overdrive from the words that the sophomore spoke. Her lips twisted into snarl, you fucking dead whore. Hours later. Naruto passed his paper to his teacher Yumi who nodded to him. She actually liked that he wasn't sleeping in class, but now, surprisingly, excelling in her class. Thanks to another prefect grade as usual. You can go to lunch. Naruto nods as he left to go to the student council room. Taisi told him to come during lunch to tell him what he needs to do to keep his secret. Man what is she going to with me? I hope I won't have to be a punching bag like with Sakura-chan. Back at Kanoha. Sakura started to beat the crap out of Sasuke who was screaming, why the hell are beating me? 
Cause Naruto isn't here. Damn it. Back in Naruto dimension. Or take my photo like some stalker. But Hinata. The pale-eyed girl sneezed as her collection of photos, hand-knit doll, and stories of her and Naruto fell on her, this is bad but also very good. Hinata saw Maniji came to see his cousin Rad face drooling as she rolled around her room enjoying her Naruto collection. Niji slowly back out and closed the door, sometimes, I wonder if Naruto never disappearing, would have made Hinatalus Grazi wish he didn't save me, forcing me to see my cousin in such a weird light without him. Crash. Niji was lying on the floor as brutally beaten Sasuke flew at his head, chasing him to be unconscious. He sometimes. You're lucky, at least your girlfriend isn't using you as second punching bag. But Naruto. He opens the door to see Taisi and Shifan working on papers, oh, Naruto, you came on time. Yeah, I promise. I never break a promise so don't make me promise to do anything illegal. He joked as the two girls giggled. Well, Taisi, I approve. I'll grab some lunch for us, so play nice. The closed eye girl waved goodbye as Taisi and Naruto look at each other. So what is it that you need for your silence? Naruto asked casually trying to finish what they started yesterday. Be easy, I want you to help out with me and Shifan on work here during lunch. Also, I'll be teaching you some high-end skills. Taisi said as she straightens out some loose papers before stacking them. Not a look a gift horse in the mouth, but why would you teach me? Naruto questioned as he took a seat and got some papers. He was in the student council last time with three women who were cruel to him, often making him and other girl did all of their work. Taisi smiles at his professional style of working and speed with the papers, well, I believe that you don't know why or how your powers came to you. But I want to help since you can one day help us in some grand scheme of things. She said as Naruto smiles he got up and gave his hand towards her. Thank you you have no idea the amount of happiness and trust you gave me. From this day forth I will always trust you. Naruto explained as his hand was waiting for Taisi's. The girl smiles beautifully as shook his head, well, I'm glad to hear that. So we'll practice tonight at the woods. Alright, time for some paperwork. Naruto pumps himself up for the manual task. Chiffon came with some burgers from the residential fast food joint, hey, I got food. In honor of having our new servant, we're going to have break and eat. But Kai-chan we need to work on the papers. Taisi reminded her fun-loving friend as she giggles. Chiffon sticks out her tongue, the headmistress told me it was until Sunday. We got a new helper so we can be lazy just this once. The kind girl smiles as she gave them food and raises her drink, a toast to our new ally. The three smiles as they had their little party for a while until Naruto looked at his watch and stood up hastily, crap. I need to go now. Where are you going? Shifan shouted as Naruto looks back. Sadlizer said to come to her room when school ends and lunch is my last period. See ya. He left as the two girls have two of the most laughable horrified expressions on their faces anyone could make. In front of the girl dorm. Naruto was walking to the steps to the girl dormitory when three females were in front of him, hello is there something wrong ma'am? Yeah, you see we don't have any limiters. And we heard that you're Macmillan's younger brother. A red-haired girl said walking towards him enjoying his body. I see you have to meet with Miss Atelis or so, perhaps we can talk later. The son of the Yadame spoke hastily as he spun around her to meet another girl. She was Japanese as she sways her hips walking towards him, seriously, I'm already in a partnership with Satellizer. So if you need to another man to take up your generous offer. And the last girl will wrap her arms around Naruto's neck and peck his cheek, come on, we're willing to share. Naruto disappears from her grasp with annoy look, stop it, I'm not going to be your limiter. That's too bad we're so willing to do this the easy way but now they all summon their volt weapons. Naruto eyes narrowed his eyes as he balls up both hands. However from the window of her atcha saw what was going after she showered. She grabs her phone, Arnett come here it's Naruto. But satellize her. The blonde young woman smiles as she look at dress for the date she planned for Naruto for becoming her limiter, though she can't do the baptism yet still wanted to show her appreciation to him. She put on an orange dress that brought her chest area out well, and she knew that Naruto loved the color orange, often stalking air finding him looking at the sunset and sunrise. She was about to straighten her hair until a loud crash made her lean to a wall, as some of her favorite stuff animals fell from the force. She left her room knowing that this may be another fight between Pandoras. She steps outside to see the three girls she defeated in the last carnival and Naruto. The boy was wrapped in chains as he was lying on the ground trying to break them off. The three Pandoras were bruised and tired as they were around Naruto. The red-haired girl brought out her pole arm weapon as Naruto jumps back on his feet. Seriously, I'm asking one last time for you guys to stop. He threatens as he raises his right leg higher into a battle stance. Heh, like we'll have the untouchable queen gain more power. Audrey Duval yells as she rushes with her pollocks to swing at Naruto. The boy jumps on the weapon, shocking the slashing maiden and her two friends. 
Naruto grinning stood there at the shock expressions, you're a lot slower than a certain warmonger I know. He kicks her face as he somersaulted away landing elegantly back at the ground as the other two Pandora came and decided to pincer strike him. The boy smiles as he dodges by jumping from another set of chains from the Japanese girl, then he spun himself to kick at the American girl who dropped one of her broadswords. As he fell he turns his face to bite on the handle. Naruto lifts as he batted away Andri who recovered from the kick to attack him again. He then let go of the sword as he spun around again to loosen the chains. The second they were able to become loose he slips out and whipped to the Bon Beep loving girl with the American girl as they were struggling to escape. Stay three if you know what's good for you. The blonde boy threatens with a dark look, showing his nova eye to add more of intimidation to them as they were in fear of the scary sight. He looks to see Andri and sighs he uses his top speed as he appeared nearly instantaneously under Andri and kicks her chin. Naruto wanted to continue the process of the primary lotus, but she was most likely already knocked out. Naruto. He turns to see his partner wearing a very attractive dress in his favorite color. Nice dress, oh I mean hey. Naruto lamely started as he scratches the back of his head. Sadlizer smiles happily feeling a sense of pride for choosing the right dress, I felt a loud noise and came across this battle. How did you beat them? It was only a matter of skill, calmness and a whole lot of luck. Naruto spoke only the truth as he suddenly pushed her as the pollux from Andri was thrown at her. But since he leaned in to push the action made him unfortunately become the target of where Sadlizer should have been. Splat. Arnett came from the school as she saw what Naruto did and his next cut open by the weapon. Naruto. She yelled out the loudest scream as she Axel turned to her brother, holding him crying at his bloody neck. Oh god. Don't worry, I'll get you to the hospital. She smiles through her tears trying to make him at ease. Lubgerger coughed the boy tried to speak, but his voice was only spitting out blood. He already had healed the deep cut, but regenerating the voice box was going to be a small challenge. Since he never need to heal anything his neck before. SHH, SHH, don't talk. It's alright, I'm here. Arnett said I ate and as she looked back to see three terrified girls. With the hatred look she made with the current anger Arnett had nearly made them faint, I'll deal with you three little shits after I get my baby brother out of here. Naruto tries to reach out to Satellizer, who was sitting in shock at what her limiter did and run towards Arnett, let me take to the infirmary. I can reach there faster. Wham. The three girls and most of the girls who were out of building due to screaming, saw Arnett punch and most likely broke Satellizer's nose with empty expression as she slid from the force of the punch. Go die and hole you bitch. It was your fault he came here. Naruto didn't worry about her, I'll take care of her later. The force Satellizer could explain the red-haired sister of her blonde limiter vanished, I didn't want to him get hurt. I just wanted him to thank him she softly spoke nearly in tears from what she saw on Naruto condition. West Genetics Infirmary. Arnett, who was waiting for the doctors to come out, was sitting in her seat stress out from the anxiety. She never should have let that untouchable queen be anywhere near her brother, she might have to break off with her limiter to become her brother's Pandora, so this would never have just him and her forever always together. She smiles sweetly that's a great idea. Elizabeth and the girls came wincing at the sight of blood all over her, what happened? The leader said as Arnett told what she saw. And I dash here and force the doctors to help him. The mad dog said as she groans from the waiting. Elizabeth held her friend as Arnett was very attached to Naruto which was understandable. She and the other barely knew for less than a week, but they all like as if they were friends for years. He had this odd way to make them relax around him, it's alright. For once you girls are right. The doctor came as Arnett looked at him with tears in her eyes. Whoa, whoa. Before you start being hysterical let me say he's going to be alright. Neck injuries are more or less like head cuts, they're superficial. He lost blood, but besides that his neck was already healing itself. Arnett smiles as she looked at the room where her brother was taken, as able to have visitors. She begged. Yeah, though try not to make him speak too much. He might reopen his throat and bleed again. The man warns as Arnett nod heading to the room with her friends. Naruto. She asked as she saw her brother sleeping peaceful on his bed. Oh thank god. She sniffed from the relief from her brother health. Siro places a hand on his shoulder, you are tough man. Taking on three second year Pandora. She spoke with pride as she playful hit his shoulder. Aish was asked by the untouchable queen to be her limiter because of this he was forced her by her enemies. She did this she hiss out as Elizabeth knows what to do. Our right Naruto get well she kissed his cheek as she left with her friends. Later. Sadlizer came wearing her school uniform with sad look, hello Naruto she started, I never meant for you to get hurt, please realizing that. She slowly grabs his hand with both of hers with determined look, I won't let anyone hurt you again. Chapter End. Alright that's it for today's video guys, let me know in the comments section how was the story, and also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will meet you in another video, peace out.